Good day, students. I am Mrs. Jai Semiadepeju, your economics teacher. Today's topic is business organization, cooperative society, and public enterprises. In her previous lessons on business organization, you have been introduced to many and types of business organization, so proprietorship, partnership, and limited liability companies. Today, I shall be taking cooperative society and public enterprises. At the end of this lesson, you will be able to, one, define cooperative society and explain its features. Two, explain types of cooperative society. Three, mention advantages and disadvantages of cooperative society. Four, define public enterprises and state its features. Five, mention reasons for the establishment of public enterprises. And six, state advantages and disadvantages of public enterprises. What is cooperative society? A cooperative society is defined as a voluntary business organization in which group of people with common interests pull their resources together to promote economic welfare of their members in production, distribution, and consumption of goods and services. It is one of the oldest forms of business organization. It is formed to meet the specific objectives of the members and has structured to adapt to a member's changing need. The welfare of the members is taken into consideration in any of its dealings. It can be found in virtually all commercial activities which have contributed to the development of the Nigerian economy by increasing the standard of living of the people. Features of Cooperative Society the following are the features or characteristics of cooperative society. One, cooperative society is formed by two or more people, but there is no stipulated maximum number of people. Two, the major aim and objective is to promote and advance the interests of their members. Three, the capital used in the business is raised through voluntary contributions from the members. Four, the management and control of the affairs of the business is vested on an elected committee. Five, there is continuity of the business because the debt or withdrawal of a member cannot bring the business to an end. Six, the liability of the members is limited to the amount contributed to the business. Seven, the business is democratic in nature. Each member has only one vote, regardless of contributions made to the society. Eight, profit for the year is shared among the members on the basis of their patronage during the year. Nine, open and voluntary membership. Anybody can be a member. Thus, membership is opened to everybody who is interested in becoming a member. There is no restriction of membership. Types of cooperative societies. One, credit and thrift cooperative society. Two, retail cooperative society. Three, wholesale cooperative society. Four, consumer cooperative society. Five, 
Producer Cooperative Society, and six, Multipurpose Cooperative Society. When we come back after this short break, we shall examine advantages of cooperative society. Stay tuned. Welcome back. Let us consider advantages of cooperative societies. The following are the advantages of cooperative societies. One, they improve members' standard of living. Cooperative societies improve the standard of living of their members by providing goods they are finding difficult to buy on their own. Examples, land, electronics, cars, and others. Two, financial assistance. They can mobilize funds needed for business investment and expansion. They also render financial assistance or give loans to their members. Three, encouragement of savings. Cooperative societies encourage saving habits among their members. Four, limited liability. The liability of the society is limited to the amount contributed by members. Five, perpetual assistance. The business can still exist for a long period of time. Debt or withdrawal of a member cannot end the business. Six, prevention of exploitation. Cooperative society, especially the consumer's cooperative society, assist to make sure that the members are protected from exploitation. Seven, education of members. They provide training to members on new techniques. Members are enlightened through regular monthly meetings. They also train their members in the area of production, distribution, buying and selling of goods and services. Disadvantages of cooperative societies. One, inefficient management. The committee in charge of administration usually consists of people who are not specialists. Hence, the society may not be effectively and efficiently managed. Two, insufficient capital. They rely heavily on contributions of the members which may not be enough to run the society. Three, misappropriation of funds. People who are appointed as members of the committee to take charge of the society usually embezzle the fund, which may lead to winding up of the business. Four, problems of loan recovery. It is difficult to recover loans given to members. This tend to destabilize the society. Five, limited expansions. There is limited expansions of the business due to limited capital available to them. Six, government intervention. Government can interfere by some form of control and this tend to slow down pace of growth of the business. Let us now discuss the second type of business organization, which is public enterprises. What is public enterprises? Public enterprises may be defined as a large-scale business organization set up, owned, and financed by the government of a country, mainly to provide services to the members of the public. They are also known as public corporation or statutory corporation. They are set up through the heart of parliament. They are not set up to make profit. However, they have to recover their operating costs, and it is controlled by board of directors, 
appointed by the government. Examples of public enterprises are 1. Nigeria Port Authority, NPA. 2. Federal Radio Corporation of Nigeria, FRCN. 3. Nigeria Railway Corporation, NRC and others. When we come back after the short break, we shall consider features of public enterprises. Welcome back to the last stage of this class. Let us consider features of public enterprises. 1. Public enterprises are owned and financed by the government. 2. They are established either by decree or act of parliament. 3. The main aim and objective of establishing them is to provide essential services. 4. They are managed by board of directors who are appointed by the government. 5. They require large capital which cannot be provided by individuals. 6. Some public enterprises are monopolistic in nature. Reasons for the establishment of public enterprises. The following are the reasons why public enterprises are set up. 1. To provide essential and infrastructural facilities for the people. 2. To generate revenue for the government. 3. To create employment opportunities for the citizens. 4. To promote economic development. 5. To control monopoly power that may be used by private enterprises. And 6. To avoid wastage and duplication of resources. Advantages of public enterprises. The following are the advantages of public enterprises. 1. Provision of social amenities. They provide the public with social amenities such as electricity, water, and so on at a reduced cost. 2. Generation of revenue. The government generates a lot of revenue from its participation in public enterprises. 3. Prevention of exploitation and discrimination. Exploitation and discrimination associated with private enterprises are prevented by the public corporation. 4. Perpetual assistance. There is continuity in the public enterprises. Death or retirement of any member cannot end the organization. 5. Creation of employment opportunities. Many public corporations provide employment opportunities for the people. 6. Economic development. Governments set up public corporations to enhance the economic development of the country. Disadvantages of public enterprises. The following are the disadvantages of public enterprises. 1. Frequent government interference. Interference from the government will have an adverse effect on the operational efficiency of the business. 2. Lack of choice by consumers. As a result of ownership of public corporations by the government, which lead to monopoly, Consumers are denied their right to choose between alternatives. 3. High level of corruption. There is high level of corruption in public corporation because the workers and officials believe that government properties are nobody's property. 4. Delay in decision making. Bureaucratic tendency might cause delay in decision-making process. Many people will be consulted before an important decision can be taken. 5. 
lack of privacy. Public enterprises are accountable to the public by preparing and presenting their annual report. With this, we have come to the end of today's lesson. Till I come your way next time, answer the following questions. Number one, what is cooperative society? Mention five types of cooperative society. Two, state five advantages and five disadvantages of cooperative society. Three, what is public corporation? Mention four examples of public corporation. Four, state five reasons for government participation in public enterprises. Thank you.